You know, with summer finally upon us, you might be wondering, what does summer camp look like for people living in the Middle East? Well, today we are going to show you. If what you're about to see does not qualify as child abuse, I don't know what does. This is the Joshua and Caleb Report. In a world plagued with anti-Israel propaganda, Paul Yavel presents the Joshua and Caleb Report, a positive voice of truth straight from Israel's heartland. In a world of negativity and fake news, every Christian should be connected to the life and positivity that Israel brings to the world. Guys, you're back here at the Joshua and Caleb Report. Luke, it's glad to have you on the show today. Thank you. Um, you know what? Today is we're covering a topic that we talk about being angry sometimes, but this is probably the most infuriating topic we've probably ever covered on the show. Oh, and that's because it involves children. Yeah. Which is just, I mean, both of us have children. A lot of our listeners probably do. So you need to see what we're about to tell you about here on the show today. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like, uh, put us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. If you want to donate and support the cause, go to patreon.com slash Joshua and Caleb or donate directly on our website. It's Joshua and Caleb dot com. Luke, you know what I'm, I'm thinking is, is that when we talk about summer camps, most people are going to think um, outdoor activities, sports, right. uh, you know, swimming, water, you know, yeah. water, outside camping, fun things for the children. I mean, that's the Western mentality of a summer camp. Um, what is Hamas, Fatah, uh, you know, down in Gaza? Yeah. Uh, what kind of summer camps? And this is what we're about to discuss. And it has nothing to do with the Western idea of what a summer camp would be. Right. Yeah. Nothing close. Uh, we're going to go into that. Luke, w let's just kick off real quick with the video. We just need to, we're yeah. going right to the, the heart of the matter here. Let's, let's uh, show this video. This, by the way, is what a summer camp should look like, right? Water, having fun. Little children laughing, playing. You know, that's what I think of. No, not. And by the way, this is a recent video right here because this came just after the Gaza Israel conflict. You know, this is going to give parents nightmares. That <laughs> does not look like what should be happening in your local summer camp. No. This footage all probably all comes from Gaza, the Gaza Strip. Okay, I like those things are fun to climb on, but shooting guns from them, I've never Maybe seen Maybe shooting a gun? I mean, going down head first. And uh, what it's saying here, and by the way, this video is from an organization called Honest Reporting. Basically, they're just talking about where is the press? And why are the, Because there is a lot of mainstream press in the Gaza Strip. Well, like they're New York Times. reporting on it. And the New York Times, we did a show, New York Times is ignoring it as well. So yeah, just right off the bat, this is a perfect example of what summer camp in the Gaza Strip looks like. And actually, we have some other photos and videos um, from 2018, just a couple of years ago. And the spokesman, one of the uh, leaders running these summer camps, actually said they had 100,000 children in the summer camp in 2018 in the Gaza Strip. You know, Luke, what I'm wondering is, where's the outrage? So if the, if the New York Times and everything we've seen so far has been a major cover-up, and we're not talking about just New York Times, all of them. Right. There, we have not Associated heard Press story. building, sharing office space with Hamas. Hamas, Israel blew them up. I mean, everybody knows the story now. Right? Literally, we have children being trained as soldiers. They're being trained in the, in, in the handing them machine guns, you name it. Right. Uh, this is what's going on in the Gaza Strip, and it's not only happening in the Gaza Strip. No. It's also happening inside Samaria as well. Uh, in Judea, uh, what they would call the West Bank, this is happening uh, a lot. So this is completely, as you started the show, child abuse. Uh, and that has to be said. I want to quote uh, Golda Meir. Golda Meir says, uh, we will only have peace with the Arabs when they love their children more than they hate us. Golda Meir was the fourth prime minister of yeah, Israel. I love that quote because it just really embodies it. And it is 100% accurate. That is exactly what the truth is here in the Middle East. Luke, I think to get the point uh, clear, we need to go through the names of some summer camps. Uh, and this is a list of summer camps that I saw. Uh, most of these summer camps are large, like you said, mm -hmm. big summer camps. First summer camp that pops up is Camp Jihad. What does Jihad mean, by yeah. the way? So Jihad is like an Arabic thing, a struggle, right. uh, like you would 
holy war. That's yeah. okay. So holy war camp. Send your children yeah. to the holy war camp. Okay, not nah. when you hear bad uh, place to go. When you hear jihad or Islamic jihad, too, it's talking about the struggle from by the Palestinians against yeah. the infidels. The Jews, Jews, Christians. Yeah. Um, so, okay, that's just the first camp. Pioneers of return. Okay, return where? Return to what? Yeah. <laughs> Palestine. Uh, yeah, from we're going to get into that sea. more, too. We're gonna they're, get that. they're not just talking about West Bank. They're not just talking about Gaza. They're not talking about Golan Heights. It's, not, it, it's a lot more than that. You know, I think of like Cedar Run or uh, yeah. River some ni- something. There's some nice national parks in, in yeah. Tennessee. You know, they, we well, should these have like, names like this. You know, children's camps, you know, summer camps that I, you know, you would find. Where they, no, okay, we'll continue the list. The Sword of Jerusalem. That's mm. another one. Uh, the Lion's Club and the Flowers. And the Flowers. Lion, uh, lion Cubs, and uh, Flowers. Oh, sorry. The, the, yeah, 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 okay. I thought it was good. Um, well, and the, this is a Fatah. Not quite the yeah, Lion's not Club. A, that's, not a, a, that's a good no, that's, organization. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the uh, Lion's uh, Cubs and the Flowers. Uh, so it sounds, that almost sounds good, but okay, we're going to, let's, Get into this one a little bit, Luke. It's the uh, Fatah brand. 150 Palestinian children attended this summer camp. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the reason why these children were selected to come to this uh, camp is because their family members had killed Jews. Hmm. Or attempted to kill Jews. So right. this is so maybe this was the upper class or the elite summer camp. Yes, yeah, so this is like the selected group of special. So what this means, Luke, is getting straight to the point here. This means that they're uh, condoning. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're saying if your parents they're promoting, are, they're promoting. If you had family members, you're now uh, eligible to join the uh, Lion Cubs, the elite, uh, and Flowers the elite Club, the, the elite. So that 150 uh, children came right. to that summer camp, um, and uh, they're going to be teaching the. Uh, <laughs> they have these games, Luke. Yeah, they have these games, uh, and they actually literally talk about or or they display an attack against Israeli soldiers and they go through the motions and teach children how you would attack a soldier. Uh, The whole thing. I think we have a photo of that too. Yeah, there you You go. You got it up here. Um, It's it's hard to deny when photos and videos are not going to... We got videos we're going to show later in the show too. So it's just the world needs to know. Uh, we have the next camp we're going to talk about is the the martyr. This is the name of the camp. Amar Abdu Laila camp. Now, mm-hmm. why would you have a camp named after a person? Hmm, I wonder why. It's a, it's a terrorist. Maybe just maybe they happened to murder. They didn't murder happen Jews. to. They intentionally murdered Israelis. Two Israelis, so a specific a camp, person. Summer camp named after them. Summer yep. camp for kids named after a murderer. Uh, so that's that camp. Uh, the camp also. Uh, let's. We, there. I don't know if we have the uh, picture for this or not. Um, yeah, I think we do. Can we put that next photo up? The uh, okay. So in the background of this photo, you see. Uh, two emblems. Mm-hmm. Um, and the two emblems, uh, this is quite ironic because you have the uh, the logos of the school. Right. The logo of the school has uh, Israel. Uh, it's disappeared. Israel's gone. Right. It's just the nation of what the borders of Israel today, and it's totally uh, disappeared with a uh, Palestinian, Palestinian the, state. The colors, yeah. Uh, the so this is the the school's logo that uh, that is represented this uh, summer camp, um, and then the the logo right next to it is the Fatah logo logo because this is a. Fatah summer camp. Which Fatah is Palestinian Authority. They're the government here in the West Bank. Yep. Uh, So their logo includes a grenade. You might see that up there. See that nice looking grenade and uh, crossed rifles. And uh, again, the PA map of Palestine. Hmm. Um, Okay, so what do we got going on here? And is this a safe place for children to go? Absolutely not. Guns and grenades and, Hmm. and, and... Wiping Israel off the map being one of the core principles. Right. Well, that's exactly what they're teaching each other. Um, you the, Also, one other camp, the Brothers of Dalal, which is named in honor of Dalal Mugrabi. This is a name a lot of people may have heard of who led a terrorist attack in 1978 in which um, a bus was hijacked in Israel and they wounded 70 people and killed 37, including 12 children, Israeli. So this was a massive, massive terrorist attack. I think there's a lot of things named after this particular terrorist. So basically um, what we have, Luke, uh, is uh, these summer camps that children are going to be signing up for now. They're signing up for these now. This week is the sign-up week. Right. They're signing up, uh, and they're going to these summer camps 
uh, being trained as soldiers. Um, and we're going to get into more details about this. But what to expect when you go to a summer camp in yeah, what we just outlined. Yeah, what can you expect? Uh, we're going to talk about what you could expect at an Israeli summer camp in just a minute, uh, which the Middle East is very diverse. And we're going to tell you that, and yes. this is just the way it is. You're going to have the ridiculous insanity that somehow the world supports. This is what the world supports, and the world is refusing to talk about. This is what really... Uh, makes me uh, just furious. Mm. This is what the world yeah. refuses to talk about. And the insanity that they will try to bash Israel and say that Israel is somehow a criminal. The ICC is is trying to bring Israel to the criminal court when this is happening on the other side. Okay. Uh, expect uh, weapons training, guerrilla tactics, combat training, uh, mock uh, abductions of IDF soldiers. Uh, and get this, more than 50,000 children just in Gaza alone uh, have signed up partic to participate in these kind of uh, right. things. So, so that we're talking about a huge thing. Yeah. Uh, they estimate that 10,000 ch uh, children and teens are trained each year uh, in this, uh, uh, in the, in the, it's specifically in the summer cramps around Judea and Samaria. Wow. We're talking about a lot of and people. And Gaza is much bigger. Yeah, where they're, well, at least they're, uh, they're uh, attempted. Yeah, well, you have like Judea and Samaria, Palestinian Authority, and then whatever, they're like the moderate ones, even though they're not, but then yeah. Gaza is just like 10 times more, worse than anything that happens. The there. idea is whether the stats, uh, however this is, this is the training that's happening. Right. Uh, this is this is the summer camps. Luke, I looked for summer camps, uh, and these were the ones that are there. Right. This is literally what... No, the, I doubt they have any other... Nor they don't have normal summer camps. I, even the normal ones that I so-called normal that had like a peaceful kind of feel about right, it. Right, right. They were also from the river to the sea. Yeah, Palestine well, will be free. They were they were saying it peacefully. They weren't giving the children guns, uh, but they were this rhetoric still was maintained even inside the what so called uh, you know peaceful right, ones. Right. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Luke, the world is actually not supporting the peaceful ones. These are the ones, and we're gonna get into this, that the international community is funneling money into to exactly. see them happen. Yeah. Uh, this Mainly is the United Nations. United Nations. Shocked. It is actually happening. Yeah. We'll be right back with the rest of the show, but first, did you know that when Jesus overturned the tables in the temple, the Gospels tell us zeal for the house consumed him. Did you know that when Jesus was lost in Jerusalem for three days as a 12-year-old, he assumed his parents would look for him in the temple? Did you also know that Jesus told his disciples he was going to prepare rooms for them in the temple? Ben Hilton's book, Jesus Loves the Temple, will explain all of these stories about Jesus' love for the temple in Jerusalem. Purchase the book today by clicking the link in the description below or order on Amazon. With the return of the Jewish people to their land in 1948 after 2,000 years of exile and the return of the Temple Mount to Jewish hands in 1967, Christianity has been forced to deal with re-examining theological issues that were thought to be long settled with the absence of the Jewish people from their land. Among these issues are Christian Zionism, replacement theology, and now the need for a temple in Jerusalem. Join author Ben Hilton as he takes a fresh look at the issue of a Jewish temple in Jerusalem as seen through the lens of Christian tradition, Jewish thought, scripture, and Jesus the Messiah himself. Everything you thought about a Jewish temple in Jerusalem and our Messiah's heart for the temple might be different than what you thought before. Find out for yourself by ordering Ben Hilton's book, Jesus Loves the Temple, by clicking the link in the description below. As always, use promo code Joshua and Caleb for a special listener-only discount. Um, got a couple quotes here from David Bedeen. We're going to play a couple videos from the, uh, he's the director of the Center for Near East Policy Research. He says, how can the United Nations school allow their students to register for a program designed to kill people? That's a super Not great only, question. But the other question is, how does UNRWA, the United Nations R Relief and Works Agency that takes care of Palestinian um, refugees, how can they not only allow their students, but also fund it and also help run some of these camps? Yeah. The te UN teachers for Palestinian refugees and their, the UN schools are actually helping to run these camps and direct and lead the children. And it's in their curriculum and the propaganda, as we're going to see more in just a minute. Uh, Luke, here's the biggest thing I see. The ICC, we mentioned just a second ago. The ICC literally has uh, targeted Israel for... Uh, war international crimes, yeah. war crimes, right? They're saying that these work, they're bringing them to the International Criminal Court. Um, listen to this. 
uh, recruiting. This is this is like law for the ICC. Uh, recruiting and using children under the age of fifteen as soldiers is defined as a war crime by international by the International Criminal Court. Where's the International Criminal Court? Well, you saw the Why video. Why are they not doing the beginning of this? You saw the beginning of a video at the beginning of this program. I don't think most of those children were older than fifteen. And you're going to see more. We're going to play a couple more videos. Look, one second. more thing. This is the most shocking thing I could say as an American citizen. Right. The United States is is uh, now attempting to put thirty two million dollars back into this corrupted, child abusing organization of UNRWA, the UN. And that's uh, we're going to watch another video now that specifically shows some of the UNRWA summer camps that are run in coordination between UNRWA and Hamas. This is particular video is from the summer of 2018 when 100,000 children attended these camps. <laughs> Every day, every week, we create more escalation because of the kites and balloons and stuff. And then um, specifically what they're showing here, and you'll see more, is that they've set up a whole entire mock training where they have to uh, throw rocks, throw stones, they have to burn tires, they have to cut through barbed wire. And if you can see in the distance on one of these shots, you see what they're um, advancing towards is Israeli flags and mock Israeli soldiers. And you literally see children. There's the tires burning, and they're literally fighting towards uh, the towards Israel. That's what they're being trained to do, 100%. Not only that, but the brainwashing is also what gets me. These children, like they're being interviewed on camera, and they're literally, literally, um, completely brainwashed. This this is outrageous, Luke. I don't know. I don't know if you know because the world is so clueless and refusing to do anything about it. Uh, the mainstream well and helping to fund it they, exactly they're fun, not only refusing to do something they're actually fund it let's so let's watch this other one Luke. right yeah one other video um, which is as this is a summer camp here in Samaria which and it's actually like a couple miles from where we're sitting right now in the Balata refugee camp this video also comes from the Center for Near East Policy Research let's play that video hey looks like a fun summer camp drawing yeah, right yeah hmm what are they drawing yeah, yeah what what is it it's fun yeah Interviewer is no. asking her what she's drawing, and she holds it up here in a second. She's drawing her homeland. What is it? A map of Palestine. What is that map of Palestine? You might be able to guess. The entire land of Israel with no borders drawn, because what do they want to do? They want to return to Haifa. They want to return to Tel Aviv, to Akko, to Jaffa, to Jerusalem. And this is what they're being taught. Even if this maybe might be a nicer summer camp because it's in Samaria, right? And right. Um, they don't have the Hamas that are, you know, just absolutely training them in guerrilla warfare. Even if they have normal activity, some normal activities, sports and things like that, they're still being brainwashed. The that, schooling behind and, it. And to a lot of the things that we saw that we just don't have the time to play. And we'll have links to all these videos. If you want to watch the full videos, it'll be in the links in the description below. Um one of the main things they teach them, they bring the children in and they designate them by groups. They're, they're dorms, they're bunks, they're all in groups. You're the Haifa group, you're the Tel Aviv group, you're the Jaffa group, you're the Jerusalem dr group. And they're constantly, and they're telling them stories and teaching them, you're going to return, we're going to kill the Jews, we're going to march on the Jews, we're going to wipe them out, we're going to throw stones, we're going to push them into the sea, and we'll return to Akko, we'll return to Jaffa, return to Tel Aviv. This is what these children are learning. Some of them very, very, very young children. Luke, I just have to compare. Um, what we've just shown people is absolutely, this is just the truth that's, that's, this is what's happening. And it's happening this summer. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's like literally about to happen Right again. before your very eyes. Right about to happen. Um, okay, what's happening in Israel, by the way? Uh, just as a quick parallel, and we're going to go back. We're going to go back to cover some other things quickly. Uh, but what in the world is happening in Israel? Right. Well, Israel is... Uh, it might not be very interesting. <laughs> it's just not interesting, and we don't have a lot to talk about, because guess what they're going to be teaching their children? Uh, over the Normal summer camps, things. they're going to be uh, doing outdoor games, and they're going to... You can go look at it yourself. I mean, I literally looked over, mm -hmm. what is Israel? I tried, I tried to find, like, a really bad, juicy, like, bad Israeli... 
Okay, it just they're not. You mean are, you mean they're not teaching Jewish children here in Israel to kill Arabs? That they're going to march on the Arabs and kill them, and teaching them guerrilla warfare and crawling under barbed wire and lighting tires on fire and throwing stones at Palestinian cars? No, I, I bet Luke, I didn't even find not anything close to that. And not only that, Luke, they're teaching them like helpful things that will help these children be successful. Right. They're teaching them media, design, coding, game, gaming, and building. Like they're teaching them things that like mm-hmm. the world, young people these days are like really getting into. Yeah, uh, a lot well, of Israel is the high-tech startup nation. So, so this is literally what they're doing. And like the, you la- could expect. the last things, on, it was funny to me because in the States, you know, the outdoors thing is like probably one of the biggest things. Right. That was like one of the last things that people click on here in Israel where they're going to go yeah. camping and stuff like that. Here, literally, it's such <laughs> a high-tech nation that literally the children are choosing to go and they want to learn like tech things while they're doing their summer camps. Uh, so this this is in contrast, Luke, uh, to the barbaric uh, attempts on the other side to train their children. It's not just attempts. It's literally right. the barbaric uh, actions of training their children to be murderers. Right. Uh, this is what Israel is dealing with right here. And literally, like you said, Luke, uh, we're standing here on the Mount of Blessing. We have uh, just a couple miles from here. This is literally what's being taught yeah. inside, not only in Gaza, but all throughout Judea and Samaria, what's known as the West Bank. Right. This is the this is the propaganda machine that's going. There's on. There's one other thing, an, something else that's being taught. My, you know, take out the summer camps. You go directly to the schools, and this is also yeah. literally probably two miles from where we're sitting right here in Samaria. Um, the European Union or the European Commission from e- the EU just released a report on the Palestinian Authority curriculum that's being used in their schools. It was buried. They didn't want to release it, but then there was some um, German investigative journalists that got some of the findings. They published them, and they forced uh, the, the, they, they forced the Euro- European Commission to release the report, okay? This is an explosive report, um, and it's been ready since February of this year, and now because of pressure, they're releasing it, right? Um, what did they find? In addition to promoting anti-Semitism and terror, most textbooks used in the West Bank and Gaza use maps that completely erase the state of Israel. Surprise, surprise, right? Hmm. Um, We've shown that before on the show. We have our own pictures from a a local Palestinian town of the map on the wall, right? But this is being taught in the schools. They exclusively refer to the land between Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea as Palestine, and the books call, the curriculum calls Israel the Zionist occupation and rejects all peace efforts, okay? Now, a couple photos we want to put up on the screen. Um, and by the way, the European Union contributes millions and millions of dollars to the Palestinian Authority Ministry of Education. So now they're under huge pressure to actually sanction the Palestinian Authority because of this explosive report. Okay, the elementary school uh, for girls in Hawara, which is just a few miles from here, built with donations from the European Commission is an example, okay? Here's, I think we have about four photos here. Uh, Photo number one is a photo that's actually glorifying violence. What do you see circled there? And these photos are from the Palestinian Media Watch. Uh, Photo of a rocket. Yeah, it's not just in Gaza, Luke. From the recent war. And uh, it actually has written on it, Ayash 22250. And it's a reference to one of the 4,300 rockets that Hamas shot at Israel in the latest conflict. Okay? First photo. Second photo. um, Erasing Israel's existence. Right next to the rocket, what do you see? A map of Palestine. Right? Painted in the colors of the Palestinian flag. And again, what do we see? From the river to the sea, all of Palestine will be free. Right? You see that entire entire thing um uh another photo the return of the refugees we saw this in the video they're constantly brainwashing and teaching the children in the summer camps they're also teaching them in the schools you see the exhibit here in the photo i'm showing them that one day they're going to they're going to be millions of palestinians will one day flood israel they call it the right of return the return of the refugees and you see decorations in the shape of the the map of palestine um the key representing the palestinian refugees and their right of return and what is all this? What is this entire school funded by? You see the photo in English, funded by Echo Humanitarian Aid Department of the European Commission Community, based in the town of Hawara, just over the hill from where we're sitting right now. Luke, I bet you you could go just about anywhere inside the uh, entire uh, Judea, Samaria, Gaza, and you'll find on every school a plaque very similar to what we just showed. That plaque that says internationals are supporting. Luke, you take the number of dollar, the dollar number that's gone into trying to build up a state here. 
It's an outrageous number. And they don't have anything except violence and terrorism <laughs> to show, to show for, for it. For it. Uh, Luke, let's let's uh, conclude. What do we got here? What's what's okay? The United Nations is funding, not only funding, but promoting violent and just horrific summer camps, which is 100% child abuse. It's worse in Gaza. It's also happening in Judea and Samaria, falsely called the West Bank, right? United Nations UNRWA schools, the United Nations, uh, rep- the refugee agency that's supposed to be taking care of refugees, right. these are their students yeah. going to these summer camps, and the teachers are the same teachers that are also teaching in the summer camps, okay? UNRWA curriculum, and now the, the latest re- explosive report from the EU, curriculum in the regular schools, you to even take out the summer camps, go to regular school, they're teaching students that Israel doesn't have the right to exist, and they're teaching them that one day they'll wipe out all the Jews and move back to all the major cities in Israel. I think, Josh, I think you should read that quote from Golda Meir one more time because yeah. it's just a perfect example. And if you're not outraged by the child abuse that is happening here, what can you do? Raise your voice. Share this program. Tell people that you know. Tell your elected officials. This has to stop because it is the literal child abuse of the Palestinians that are suffering in Gaza and in the West Bank. Yeah, literally, Golda Meir. It's so true. It's it's amazing. That it still ch- stands true today. The, what the world tries to do is they try to make this. Uh, they've tried to paint Israel as this aggressive monster in the Middle East, when the opposite is so true. The Middle East, the the Arab regimes that are raising their ugly head to do what we've just showed, t- literally raising up children soldiers. How more debased and awful can you get? Right. Uh, literally, that was the same battle that Golda Meir faced as the fourth prime minister of Israel, and her word still stands true. We only have peace. We will only have peace with the Arabs when they love their children more than they hate us. That literally is so true. And Luke, if we were thinking about summer camps to send our children for. I think we're going to go uh, hour two. We're going. Let's send our children to the Jewish ones this year. That's right, guys. Please raise your voice. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell. Tell people that you know. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your coworkers. Tell your elected officials because this is not being seen anywhere on the media. But it is one hundred percent the truth, and it needs to be told. Be strong. Be courageous, and be the voice of Joshua and Caleb in your generation. Hi guys, if you enjoyed the show, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We also have tons more incredible content straight from Israel's heartland, which you can find completely free at joshuaandcaleb.com. If you're interested in signing up for a life-changing volunteer program in Israel's heartland, you can go to serveisrael.com. We host Christians from all over the world to help plant trees, harvest grapes, prune vines, and basically help farmers all over Judea and Samaria, all while experiencing the land and people of Israel in a way that you're never going to get on a 10-day tour. Just go to serveisrael.com to find out more information. Stand, yes, I-